on to big fucking dogs. Third fight of the night is a fucking banger. We have Gilbert Burns coming in versus Hamza Chemaev. This is probably one of the most highly anticipated non-title bouts and uh, in UFC in recent history. Um, really what this comes down to is one guy going up and one guy going down. Um, maybe even a title eliminator for the future. Um, but Jesus, this is going to be madness, Zach. We have Gilbert Dorino Burns, number three in the world, come at 20 and four. He's coming off a win over Stephen Wonderboy Thompson before his title defeat against Usman. Gilbert is coming out uh, 5'10 with a 71-inch reach. On the other side is the lightning rod. Hamzat Chemaev taking this sport by storm. Coming at 10 and 0. All finishes, I believe. Uh, he's coming in at 6'2 with a 75-inch reach. So definitely a size advantage to Ham- uh, Hamzat Chemaev especially since he's fought at middleweight as well and had success there too. But, Zach, the question is, does a hype train keep rolling th- through town and fucking shit up, or does he get derailed? Chugga, chugga, choo-choo, bitch. I'm riding every last minute of this hype train because – it's not, that's not what it is. It's not a hype train. It's not everybody get behind this guy because he's got rainbow hair color and he talks cool. This dude's a fucking stone cold killer. And I mean, I don't think that I can remember anybody being ranked as low as him and with as few fights in it as him that's walking into something that could very easily make him a number one contender. If he beats Gilbert, I don't see who would be in front of him in line after Leon gets his title shot. You know, maybe they want to do Jemiah versus Colby, but I don't see any point in that, quite frankly. The Chechen hit squad is going to be out on Saturday night. I'll tell you that. Um, Hamza, I, I agree with you. I mean, what prospect have we seen in even the last five years that has had any kind of hype any kind of record, any kind of domination that he has had on his way ascending up the ranks. I mean, the last guy that I can think of that comes to mind is Habib. I'm not saying he's Habib or even has a style like Habib, but good Lord, he his domination is Habib-esque. I, look, I couldn't agree more. Who was the last person you saw – dangle their opponent over the balcony like Michael Jackson did with that kid and have a whole conversation with Dana White while doing it and then proceeding to slam the dude on his head and choke him out. I mean, I don't know, but that was that was a work of art. And I don't know if you're watching Catholic experience, but what I said was going to happen, happened exactly. I said Lee was going to throw a, a bomb of a hook and – Hamza was just going to duck right under it. And what happened? Exactly that. And complete, utter domination. I mean, in his UFC career, I think it was, what, three or four fights now? Four fights? He's been hit twice, which has to be some kind of fucking record. It is. He hasn't made it out of the second round. He hasn't even made it into the third round, which I don't know if it's beneficial or not. But, you know, from the stories that everybody hears about his training, you know, three, four, five times a day, with the best of the best and even ragdolling, you know, bigger weight classes. This guy is legit. I think he he has a possibility to be the first three division belt holder. But um, enough bragging on Hamza. I think his opponent is not getting enough love this weekend. I think he knows it. Um, Gilbert Burns, from what he did at lightweight, now at welterweight, how he came up weight class and has just flourished. Um, I think that's going unrecognized, taking down Stephen Thompson, doing what he did to Stephen Thompson, even though we kind of saw it coming. And then his whole fight with Usman, where he stunned him. He I mean, rocks Gil- his ass, dude. Yeah. Gilbert Burns is no slouch on the feet. If this stays up, 
I think Gilbert will have success, but you know, we still haven't even seen 90% of Hamza's game. That's what's funny is as much as I think this fight is going to be in Hamzat's world, whether it's on the feet or on the ground, I think there are just certain things that Gilbert's going to be able to achieve in this fight that are going to show us a lot about Hamzat. I mean, first of all, I'm not extremely coy on this idea, but I think that this is the first time since we've talked about Chemayev on this show that we could you know, maybe say that this fight might make it to the second round, might make it to the third round. We have no idea what this guy's cardio looks like. You know, it's rumored to be unworldly, but, I mean, we don't know. I I certainly think that Hamzat's beautiful 196 to 2 strike ratio is going to change. I think Gilbert's going to hit him a few times, and we're certainly going to have to see what he's made of there. But, you know, looking at it, I think Gilbert is going to have trained and done everything in this camp to make sure that this fight doesn't get to the ground. We already know what level of skill he stands at in terms of jujitsu. So even if Hamzat can get him there, I I don't favor the idea of him pulling off a submission like he claims he's going to do. But I think if this fight stays on the feet, we're going to see explosiveness from Hamzat's hands and, I think this is the first fight on this card. I'm taking the TKO bet. I think Hamzat gets back in the TKO KO column with another just dominant victory this weekend. I, I agree. I, I think where people are coming from, from the Gilbert Burns size, oh, he's a jujitsu ace, blah, blah, blah. You know, he beat Gunnar Nelson, blah, blah, blah. Even though he didn't choke him out, he still did him up. Hamza is a completely different animal than um Gunnar Nelson uh his stand-up we don't even know he's thrown one strike in the stand-up and knocked a full out like um completely crazy we we don't even know like I was saying however when it comes to a jujitsu guy versus a wrestling stud and that comes from that Dagestani background, even though Hamza is not from Dagestan, but that Dagestani style of just grind it out, keep you on the floor, hold you down with a Dagestani handcuff and punch you in the face when you can't do nothing style of fighting. Um, I don't think that bodes well for a jujitsu guy. Yeah, he can pull a guard and maybe Hail Mary triangle, but you know, that's not really going to happen. Um, especially when those Dagestani guys and Hamza alike like to get people in side mount uh, against the cage and hold down their hand. Can't really, there's no submissions when you're holding guys pinning them down like that. So it'll be very interesting. I'm taking Hamza via finish in this fight. Um, and I venture to say under two and a half. So no, I, uh, shit, I just lost my idea. Oh, there it is. I, I like the the point you made in the McKenzie Dern fight as it, as it applies here. We talked about this before we started recording, actually, but Gilbert used to make 155. He's not the biggest welterweight that there's ever been. Shemaev has people talking about him potentially being the first person to ever be a three-division champ because he has the size to fight at welterweight, middleweight, and maybe even potentially light heavyweight. So I think that that's going to play a big difference into how this fight plays out is the idea that, you know, Gilbert might not have to cut a lot of weight, but he'll probably walk into the fight at, you know, 175 or 270, ah, 175, 180. They're not 270 pound men, but Shemaev probably is in there at 85, 90, probably has him by at least 10 pounds. And that certainly is a difference maker when you have a guy that's so good at wrestling. I mean, I agree. I think this fight's going to say a lot. I think this is where the the proof is going to be in the pudding. Gilbert Burns is a legit welterweight, fought for the title. I don't think anybody will dispute that he's a top five welterweight at this moment. Um, so, you know, it's just going to be, is it going to be domination like we've seen? 
or is it going to be something new? Is it, is it going to be longer but more technical or do- domination through three rounds? Or is, is, is it going to be upset? I think this is the most anticipated paid fight of the entire year, and for good reason. I, I mean, if you give me five more fights um, of up-and-comers, I don't think any of them can meet the hype that this fight is going to create. I mean, truthfully, this is the anchor fight on this card. This is what takes this card from, you know, a decent pay-per-view to a really good pay-per-view. This is that fight that, you know, it's not a title fight. It's got title fight implications behind it, but it's something that I think everybody is just excited to, A, see what Gilbert has left in the tank. Not that he's old or growing out of anything, but just in terms of the fact that, He's only fought Kamaru Usman once. Usman's already beaten Colby and Masvidal twice. If he beats Leon, who else is there going to be left for him? You know, maybe Gilbert, maybe Gilbert Burns after this fight. On the other hand, Chemayev is like, he's like oil in the ground, man. Untapped potential that just nobody knows how much is there. Nobody knows how much and how far it goes down, but you know, if we had to reckon to guess here at the calf kick experience, I think this is a guy we're going to be talking about for a really long time. And shit, we said that back in March last year. We've been we've been echoing his name for over a year now. I bet you he's the only fighter outside of maybe Islam Akhachev to be on every single episode of the calf kick experience. Yeah, if you type in Gilbert Burns. All right. Uh, here we go. Gilbert Burns coming in as a plus four twenty five dog, and Hamzat Chimaev coming in back as a minus five hundred favorite. Dude, those are ridiculous odds for a number two ranked guy versus a number eleven ranked guy. That should tell you all you need to go. No, but uh, look, even fight won't start round three. Minus 165. That that's ridiculous. Hamza by TKO solid plus 163, but he has submissions. So I mean, I I'm not super confident in saying anything here that is like, okay, this is my prop bet, unless you have anything that I'm not seeing. It's just funny because the submission prop bet for Chemayev is at plus four hundred which is a lot higher than the plus 163 for knockout. But I just – I don't see anybody subbing Gilbert Burns. No, I mean, no disrespect to Chemayev after we just sat here and hyped him up for the past however many minutes. But, you know, as opposed to playing that minus 500 money line, if you're going to pick Chemayev, you have to either play the plus 163 or the plus 400. Unless maybe we're just completely wrong and you want to go with the decision, but that seems like the least likely out of the three options we just listed. I think your best option is Kamaya wins inside distance minus 163, and that's still not great. But from the minus 500, I think, you know, dropping dropping 400 points on that, that's significant. I think you take this. I, well, that's I, a parlay play. That's absolutely something I can say with confidence. If you leave it open ended to the TKO or the submission, I think that I think that bet's going to hit. So if you want to play that, you know, in conjunction with some other things on this card, that's probably what I'm going to do. I think that's a really good idea. I think that's the move minus one sixty three for Kamayev in the gambling perspective. <laughs> 